This is my comparative art analysis of the graphic novel for the picture of Dorian Gray. My first topic is going to be on Sybil Vane. In the graphic novel, she shows up in three separate colors, which for each scene that we see her in represents a different person that she is. In the first color, she is the lightest. It's when we first meet her. It's full of bright, saturated purple tones. It's very clearly the happiest point we see her in. The second color that shows up on her is slightly darker. It's the one that shows up every time she's acting. It's when she's on stage. It's the form of art version of her that Dorian falls in love with. It's got these yellow-green tints. It's got a dark, muted feel. It's very clearly not real to her, even though we know it is to Dorian. Sybil's last color appears in three progressively darker shades, the first of which is when Dorian first approaches her and tells her, quote, you have killed my love. And in that moment, she actually looks down for the first time in the entire novel because she's starting to doubt Dorian. The next scene is a shade darker. It's very desaturated and mostly just grays in the scene. What it is is when Dorian first hits her, it's his first act of violence against her or against anyone, really. And it's her concrete evidence that Dorian is not going to come back to her. And so he leaves and she's left in that despair. The last scene we see her in is the darkest we ever see Sybil. It's clearly the depiction of her death that's very dark. There's all these yellow-brown tones. It's, like, muted, like she's not real anymore, only this time she's not real to Dorian. And all the light that we see in her at the very beginning when we first meet her, that's completely gone. She, as a character, has been depleted. The other interesting thing about Sybil is that her face is always turned up. It's facing the reader... It's looking upward. This probably definitely symbolizes like how innocent she is, how naive she is. Like constantly she's hopeful. She believes in Dorian. She believes in her future. She honestly thinks that everything is going to be great. Across all three ways that we see her, when she's happy, when she's acting, when she's dead, her face is always up. Um... This is especially contrasting to Dorian, who in every interaction with Sybil, he is looking down, almost angry. I mean, we don't see the sections where he's falling in love with her, but for the most part, he does not look up. He is not that symbol of hope and light. He is the darkness, and she is not. The next topic I'd like to address is the depiction of women in the book. As we hear from... Lord Henry Wotton, he says, no woman is a genius. Women are a decorative sex. This is a theme that is portrayed without, throughout the novel and is especially emphasized in the graphic novel because, as we realize, every single woman is identical. I mean, maybe they have different facial structures, but they're all tall, they have long blonde hair, they're just there as an aesthetic, they are a decorative sex. This is especially interesting because Dorian looks like the women in the book. He's the only blonde-haired man in the graphic novel. Every single other man is either gray-haired or a brunette. But Dorian is blonde and tall, and he's described as having rosy cheeks and having eternal youth. And he's looks like the women, and he's like he's judged by his looks. People consider him innocent because he's pretty, which makes you wonder how Oscar Wilde is trying to depict his character. Henry views Dorian as a metaphorical palette to paint on. He does not think he has his own thoughts, which is probably true because we see that all of his actions, all of his thoughts, everything he ends up doing comes straight from Henry in the book that he's given. 
For my last point, I'd like to discuss two of the largest foils in the entire book, Lord Henry Wotton and Basil Hallward. Now, in the novel, we read them as foils characteristically. We can tell that they have different mindsets from the outset. They do not agree. They're friends, but they do not agree, and they're put in similar positions to amplify their differences. Henry is clearly the bad influence on Dorian, and Basil is the good influence on Dorian. Something that I noticed as I was looking through the author's sketches in the back of the graphic novel is that the artist clearly wanted to emphasize the biblical parallel of the story. He clearly drew Henry as a satanic look-alike. He has the classic pointy goatee and beard. He's dark. He's got the clever face and the dark eyes. And Basil is the Christ figure. He has the Jesus hair. He's always wearing white. He's the light, positive influence. And that's something that the artist really emphasized as he was drawing the scenes. Even though they are friends, Basil and Henry pose a striking contrast to each other from the start. They disregard anything the other says. They're clearly not in agreement. Before they even meet Dorian together, they are arguing about who will affect him. Despite Basil's pleas, Lord Henry, within five minutes of meeting Dorian, has already begun to tell him his ideologies and what he thinks about him, has already begun to pour his thoughts over Dorian's naive and gullible mind. Even beyond that, within the first 24 hours of meeting him, Dorian has proclaimed that he would give up his soul for the ideology that has been taught to him by this devil figure, by this dark influence that we see in the book. Of course, Basil blames Henry for it because he's right. It is his doing that brought about Dorian's desire to give up his soul to the idea of beauty and youth. Later, when Dorian has begun to really stray from Basil's influence and fully listen to Henry only, we see Henry as this creepy sort of guy, and he basically says, Hey, Dorian, I know that everything you do comes from me. All through your life, you will tell me everything you do. He feels that he has complete control over this young man. Later in the book, the artist introduces a more of a red-green contrast between Basil and Henry versus the black-white contrast that we see in the beginning, which changes it from less of a pure versus unpure to become straight-out good versus bad. And um, this is present in all the interactions we see between Basil and Henry. When we see Basil and Dorian meet again after many years... Basil immediately begins almost preaching to Dorian, begging him to not be the corrupt person that everyone seems to think he is, that he wants to believe that he can still be saved. In fact, Basil is the only character in the book to actually quote biblical verses. In the novel, other people also quote verses, but in the graphic novel, it is clear that Basil is the only one to ever quote these phrases and these he begs Dorian to actually pray for help to pray for repentance so that his sins can be accounted for in the build up before Dorian kills Basil we see Dorian morph into this almost demonic looking thing it's actually a very scary image and he's covered in this red tint that we saw before that comes from Henry's influence and when Dorian goes back to check the painting, it has assumed that demonic red visage and he's like scared by it even though we know that that's what he was just a moment ago. He passed through that and then it went straight back to his painting. The last time we see Dorian is when he's finally killed himself and all his servants find him lying on the floor and his painting has been restored to its youth and he has taken on all the qualities of his painting. And he looks demonic. He looks possessed and overcome by all the sins he has borne over all these years. He looks soulless, which makes sense because we know he probably 
gave up his soul back in the beginning of the book. Now, the book clearly means that biblical parallel that I mentioned earlier, where Basil would be the Christ figure and Henry would be the devil figure, which leaves Dorian, you could say that he would be a Judas figure because he did betray um, Basil and in the end hung himself from guilt of everything he's done. I mean, he didn't hang himself, Judas hung himself and Dorian killed himself. But you could also see definitely that Dorian is more like the character we saw in Young Goodman Brown, where he's the common person trying to go from temptation to righteousness, and he just chose the wrong path.